Hey guys, TC made with TC Gaming. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe even longer, I did a video on Advanced Locomotion System version 4 with Unreal Engine version 5 on a Cinti Polygon asset. And uh, got a lot of feedback from that because of some things that were missing in the project, I guess, with regard to the uh, attachments. Um, so in, in ALS version 4, you have this overlay system, and so you can change a couple things to um, dictate how it represents different animations in here and one of the biggest ones is like the rifle and the pistol and then you have a bow and a torch and if you want to get crazy there's also binoculars and a box in there and a barrel and all that kind of stuff but I would venture a guess to say that most people are interested in making sure that the rifle can be represented and also that the pistol can be represented so what I did is I went through and I added a couple of things to this project to make this easier for you to use it. And I'm going to upload this to my Google Drive so you can just download it and play with it. And what I'm going to do in this video is just kind of walk you through some of the things that I did to make this usable. And uh, what's included with the project. So if we go in here in the content, what you should see is you'll have the Advanced Locomotion System version 4 in here. Which is just the stock marketplace version added to a UE5 project. There's also a characters folder and a third person folder which come from going to add feature or content pack and bringing in the third person character pack. And the reason I did that is because inside of characters you have retargeting assets in here for these rigs for the characters in UE5. And that third person just uh, comes with that. That's your traditional third person mannequin. Uh, but that just comes in as a... a piece of bringing the characters folder in and I also included my Cinti folder in here which is an animation blueprint for Cinti, an IK retargeter for advanced locomotion system to Cinti, an IK rig for Cinti and the other assets that go along with this. Now this Cinti polygon unreal uh, mesh that's in here what this basically is for is so that you have a stock ALS mesh or uh, whatever skeletal mesh that you can take your Cinti polygon assets and, and move these on to. Basically what you do is when you bring in your Cinti assets to this project, you're going to replace the skeleton that's with your Cinti pack with the character that's in here with this skeleton and this mesh. <clears throat> Excuse me, not necessarily the mesh, but the skeleton itself. And what that'll do is it'll allow your meshes to be on the skeleton that actually has all this stuff already on it and it'll work pretty well and I explained that in another video um, I'm not going to go back over it here but what I wanted to show you is inside of here you have these basic things the way that I have this set up is that in the default pawn class you still have your ALS Animan character BP if you go into this you'll have just like you do in the normal project you have what's called a visual mesh and then there's usually this thing called body mesh and what I did is I added under the visual meshes section, I added a Cinti underscore character block where we can put the skeletal mesh for our Cinti polygon guy and the anim class for his ABP Cinti. If you look at this, this is just a simple pass through of the retarget pose from the mesh for my retargeter. And I think it's under details right here. IK retargeter asset for the ALS to Cinti. And what this does is, if you're not familiar with this whole thing, I, I did explain this in other videos. What it does is it takes the animation data from a parent asset and passes it on to a child. In the case of this project, what we have is our our normal ALS guy, which you can't see here because I haven't turned off. If you go to Viz and turn this on, there's actually a polygon guy, or I mean a um, ALS guy here. And I just have a Cinti character also in here. And I'm taking the animation data from ALS and passing it to the Cinti character using that asset it, that I just talked about a second ago. And then what you do is after you get everything all set up, you just shut off the visibility for the main guy. And you also do this always tick pose and refresh bones. By the way, this is kind of the way that ALS is set up in the first place. If you have a, a mesh you want to put on to ALS, you just go in here to the body mesh and assign it and tell it to uh, you know to work with that character and then just shut off the, um, the visibility. But the other thing that's important in here is that when you look at the Cinti Polygon guys in comparison, so I'll show you here inside of the retargeter, um, 
this retargeter is set up so that what you can do is you can take animation data from character A and pass it on to character B. In this case, our source and targets are ALS and uh, Cinti. So if I take any pose that's in here, let's say I do walk forward and just play that. Let's uh, crouched walk forward. Let's do, doesn't really matter which one we do, but let's just say walk and it should be a normal walk front. Okay. So as these characters are walking, I mean, they look pretty good. The animation data is all um, being translated over. But see this target actor offset in here? If I go and I make this zero, what it'll do is it'll lay these characters right on top of each other. I'm just going to pause the animation for a second to show some important things here. The, the Sinti character has a slightly different arm length and height than what the ALS character does. And so as a result, in your animation or in your character blueprint, the code in there is trying to tell this by default under the held object system to attach the hand. By default, what it was doing is there's a mesh, which would be your normal poly or your normal um, ALS guy, right? And a man. So it was telling the mesh to attach to a thing called VB RHS IK handgun and LHS IK handgun. These are your IK sections for the uh, for the guns. And so what I've done is I've replaced that with just a hand R gun and a hand L gun socket that are on the Sinti character. And instead of passing this data to the mesh, which was originally in here as the parent, I'm just doing it to the Sinti character. Okay. And so what that'll do is it'll say, go and find the socket called hand R gun or hand L gun and attach that depending on whether it's a right-handed or left-handed weapon, which is, I think, figured out from, uh, from other portions over here. This is where your attachments all happen. So if you want to attach a, you know, a, <clears throat> excuse me, a pistol or a rifle or whatever, it's following this logic to do that. And in most cases, when you build something with ALS version 4, you're not going to be using an overlay menu to figure out how something should be attached or equipped or anything like that. You're going to build an entirely different set of logic uh, parameters for that or use some other system that already does it in their blueprint, and you're just using the ALS locomotion portion of this advanced locomotion system for your movement. So this is kind of arbitrary in the sense of just kind of getting it to represent what you guys are looking for, but, but really you probably won't even use most of this, but it's at least good to know how this is set up. So if you're, again, you're in the ALS Animan blueprint under the held object system, and then that attached to hand, this is where I've changed this to the Sinti character and uh, made it for whatever socket is actually on there. So if you go to the, um, if you were to go to the Sinti character and you look at... Let's just go to the skeletal mesh for this. We'll pull up his skeleton. I have a hand L gun socket. And I have a hand R gun socket, which I said uh, earlier replaces those things. So when you're out here in the overlay menu, if you hit Q while you're in the game, again, you can <clears throat> change all these different states. So there's the feminine pose, the injured pose, the hands tied behind the back pose. And here's the rifle. Now, the rifle is basically just, you can see this has still got a little bit of weird uh, offsets to it. And it's because the Sinti character is not sized for these weapons. So what you would probably do is in your weapon pack, you're going to get weapons that fit the Sinti guy already because they came with the Sinti pack. And then you're just going to go in there and replace what's being attached. And then you can modify your character uh, socket to accommodate that particular weapon but let's say for example you were trying to adjust this <clears throat> excuse me one of the ways that you could do it is while you're in the game you just hit the f8 key and now you have this where you can like freely move around so i just go back over here and get to where i'm viewing my character and then inside of the asset for this character you can pull this down go back out here and look at your level and now if you go into your socket that's over here excuse me, there's your right hand socket. So if you were to grab this, you can actually, you know, move this around in here and tweak how this is laying into those hands. And once you get this figured out for whatever it is that you're doing, you know, this should pretty much apply across the board to anything that's in that, that socket. So again, you can go in here and tweak these. I don't have the time to sit and do this, you know, myself for for uh, running through that. Actually, it was pretty good. So you would leave it and just save this. Now when you go back in there, 
Um, again, you could either go back in and hit F8, or you could just hit, uh, you know, Alt-P to go back in. But now if I go back to that overlay for the rifle, you know, maybe that looks a little bit better. So, actually, it's off now that I tilted it. So, again, I could hit the F8 key, go back over here and find this, swim, uh, swim, um, move the camera over here, and now I can look at the, the pitch of the weapon and take this socket here, not that one, once you figure out which one it is, and we can just tilt it, say, this way, and maybe that looks a little bit better when it's up to his arm, and if that doesn't work, then what you do is you go and you bring in, you know, bring this out a little bit further, but there's a thing here for translate mode, <clears throat> and then you can just move the sockets around, you know, back and forth, up and down, in and out, or whatever to get this where you want to. Now, let's say you don't want to dick around with that inside of the game. What you would do is you can go in here, and you can create an asset for the preview animation for this. So, I have one here for preview animation for the um, pistol sweep. And what you would do here is just pause, find a frame you're interested in. Again, you can rotate your camera around. Now in this case here it's the pistol so I would go to the right hand gun socket and say add preview asset and the pistol I think is the uh, M9 so find the M9 attach it to the thing and then now you can go through and again pause this find a frame where you want to look at it and then you can go in and say I want to like, tilt this this way I want to take this socket and pull it in. Again, this is all stuff you do anyway when you're building these games and you have to put your own weapons in. You're always going to be playing around with these sockets anyhow. So I just want to show you where all that's at. The way that the animation data is being passed to this thing <clears throat> is actually, as I said earlier, there's an animation blueprint that's just picking this up. And the reason I put these cached poses in is because you may have things where you want to do upper body and lower body splits. So I went ahead and put an upper body and default slot split in here for you with a layered blend per bone, layered blend per bone <laughs> already on here. And you're just taking the locomotion uh, pose and, and blending those in here out to your output. So that way, if you have something in a montage where you want to play a montage that has upper body, you can just assign it to the slot. This is already done for you. If you have to do more of them, you can just come in and add a pin, add additional ones in, and, and then you know, tell it how to manage it. All that's up in here. Those are all covered in other videos, not this one. But again, this is going to be on my drive. <clears throat> Hopefully this helps you guys out. And uh, if you have questions about it, I'll try to answer them. I'm not the world's greatest uh, ALS uh, aficionado, but hopefully it helps you. Again, my name's TC Made with TC Gaming, and this will be on my drive. I'll have the link provided in the description of the video. You guys have a great day. Good luck with everything, and hopefully, uh, as I said, this project helps you out. Catch you later. Bye-bye.